Hi, I'm Brent Johnson. Happy New Year. It's New Year's Eve. I'd like to make one last video here before the end of the year. It's already 2020 in some places. It's gotten cold again, so after a warm Christmas, this is a good day to be inside. I have another film for you, another old video. Uh, this one from 1994. This uh, was produced by what's called the Pipe Organ Film Committee of the American Guild of Organists. And this video was sent to an organ builder from Victor Schantz, who is the president of the Schantz Organ Company in Orville, Ohio. He was then as well. Uh, but he was also uh, on this committee. And the film came with a, uh, a letter. So I'm just going to read that to you just to let you know uh, what we're talking about here. Um, the letter reads, the Pipe Organ Film Committee, made up of representatives from APOBA, AGO, AIO, that's the American Institute of Organ Builders, the Oregon Historical Society and the American Theater Organ Society has been working for over a year to create a promotional film. We're hoping to complete it in time for the AGO Centennial Celebration in 1996. We have completed the first phase of the project, which was to select a filmmaker, create an overall plan and budget for the film, and create a short video about the project to assist with fundraising. Your copy of that video is enclosed. We welcome your feedback. Our goal is to raise $350,000 to make the film. We have established a strategy based on the following. $100,000 from foundation grants. We have identified a list of foundations and are writing grant proposals now. $150,000 from individual donors. We are working with AGO's professional fundraiser and have developed a list of potential donors who will be solicited. $75,000. They plan to offer a pre-subscription campaign to all AGO, OHS, AIO, and ATOS members. A subscriber will send us money for a copy of the film in advance of its being made and in exchange for a special centennial copy which will be sent at the conclusion of the project. And then $25,000 from APOBA firms, other participating organizations, and AGO chapter foundations. $350,000 to make this film is what they wanted. That's what it would have cost to do this in 1994. It's mind-boggling. They thought they could raise that. Uh, the documentary film is the raw material from which many types of future projects can develop. We envision applications for coffee table books that complement the film, as well as CD-ROM and educational videos that can come from the original film footage. Royalty income from the distribution of the film to television programs, sales to organizations, and individuals can help make these projects happen. We're investing in future promotion. So this wasn't just going to be a film, but there would be lots of uh, materials they would collect uh, and use in other places. You're familiar with this. We're excited about the level of quality and human interest our filmmaker brings to the project. We're encouraged by our success to date. We think our fundraising plan for the rest of the project is realistic and can be accomplished by our committee with the help of our fundraiser, who is the same person that is helping the AGO with their endowment campaign. By the way, I don't know how that campaign went, so I don't, can't comment on that, but... The letter goes on, we need the support of the industry and we hope to encourage you to join us in this effort. The pre-production planning for the film involves settling the script, the film sites, etc., and represents a cost of $24,000. We want to raise that part of the goal right away so that we can be ready to start filming in time for the pipe organ encounters next summer. This is a risk venture in that if we don't raise the funds, the monies paid out are lost and we only have the short video to show for it. So this is the short video that they all, that's all they got to show for it. Um, just so you know, uh, this video was made possible by uh, following a POBA firms that already had committed some money, Schantz Organ Company, Schoenstein Organ Company, Organ Supply Industries, Bedient Organ Company, and Martin Ott Organ Company, who it looks like had contributed a total of about $8,000. So they're asking this builder to make a tax-deductible contribution of $500. Checks are going to be made out to the AGO Pipe Organ Film Committee and mailed to him. I don't know how they were going to raise $25,000, $500 at a time uh, from the number of organ builders that they had available, but it was worth a shot. We believe that we can enrich people's lives with knowledge of craft and art with a film that is fast-paced and fun and one that expands the appreciation of the organ to a larger audience. We think the country is ripe for reminders of the existence of traditional values like this, and that factor will help us achieve our goals. Finally, we believe our industry's survival depends on joint promotional efforts of this kind. We are gratified to see the various organizations working cooperatively to help this project along. Please give this serious consideration and free, feel free to call him if you want to talk. So, uh, yeah, this was an opportunity to try to raise money from everybody in the industry to put a nice video together. That $350,000 number boggles my mind a little bit. Just so you know, we're wrapping up the year of the Oregon Media Foundation's budget for everything we do. Uh, is about $22,000, I think, this year, and we have succeeded in raising a little more than that this year. So next year, we'll uh, be able to do a little more, thanks to your help. Uh, nowhere near $350,000, though. Um, so your small contributions to the Oregon Media Foundation goes a long way in helping us bring the music of the organ and uh, projects like this to the whole world through the Internet. Remember, for contributions to the Oregon Media Foundation, you can do it online. Go to Oregon.media and click on support. But for now, enjoy this video from 1994. Happy New Year, and I'll talk Talk to you in 2020.
just the sheer magnitude of the instrument itself is, is overwhelming and, and creates feelings of awe and sublimity. <laughs> There's something uh, undeniably sacred about organ music. My father was a great lover of organs, and so uh, I used to fall asleep at night listening to the recordings of E-Power Biggs. Oh, I've loved the organ all my life. I'm sure as a very young child, it was one of the first instruments I heard. It takes me out of myself. It's beautiful. Jack Wimberly is 14. He's played the organ since he was 10. This is the first time he has performed at Stanford University's Memorial Church. I think when Jack gets charged up, and you know, gets into the power of the instrument, the new organ. It gets very overwhelming for me to realize that that's, that's my son up there playing that instrument. It's a feeling of incredible power when you can suddenly realize what an organ can do and what you can make in the way of music with that instrument from the softest softs to the most powerful louds and everything in between and all sorts of shades and colors, and it gives you a sense of awe, and as if you're really nothing at all, it's just the instrument that's there. It was a powerful experience. Big, big instrument, big noise, big everything. <laughs> so, I was really exciting too. I mean, I felt like Mr. Power behind the organ. It's a really neat instrument to play. Especially when you're young and you like loud noises and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> In 1995, a major film for television will be created to celebrate the pipe organ in America. We'll feature every kind of organ. The old, the new, the sacred, the secular, the mechanical action, the electro-pneumatic. I'm a minister and I think as a minister it's the organ that provides the inspiration in the service of worship. It's the organ and the sense of creativity, uh, the power of God. I've always felt that I wanted to serve a church that had a good organ. In this film, We'll also look at the widely differing communities who love and cherish these extraordinary instruments. For years, no night out at the movies was complete without the mighty Wurlitzer. The Paramount Theater in Oakland, California is on the National Register of Historical Places. What I like is I like the vibration as well as the sound. It has a real nice rich feel to it. And it gets inside you and it's wonderful, it's fun. No, there's nothing like the mighty Wurlitzer. <laughs> <laughs> It's a treat. You want total entertainment at the movies. You couldn't ask for more. It's so massive, and it fills the... I mean, it's like having a symphony orchestra, isn't it? It just kind of takes you back to that time and when things were a little simpler. And movies and were actually still an event. I'm lucky enough to be old enough to remember when that was part of the show and giving away dishes and, and the organ. You know, I mean, it was just, you know...
Tonight, the organ will accompany the original 1925 version of The Phantom of the Opera. The film will also show how young people first discover the pipe organ. Huh? You do the drums. The drums? Oh, well, we have lots of drums. We have a snare drum. You know what a snare drum is, like the type in a big band? Uh, we also have silent movie sounds. Now, you, you saw a little bit of the silent movie on the screen earlier. We have sound effects that go along with uh, making a silent picture. If you have an old car go across the screen, I push this button, it sounds like... <laughs> sounds like an old car horn. Do you hear a piano in there? Yeah. Well, there's a real piano way up high on the left side. Sounds like this. <laughs> if you have a train... Matter of fact, you can make a great train sound on this. This will become a one-hour film for television and video distribution with your help. We have the support of all the principal professional organizations connected with the American Pipe Organ. Now we need your support too. Please write to Pipe Organ Film Project, care of the American Guild of Organists, 475 Riverside Drive, Suite 1260, New York, New York, 10115, or call 212-870-870. 2310.